Welcome, welcome. It's so great to be with you for part, well, part one of level three in our exploration of the creative energy levels. We're working with the levels of energy that start with zero, which is the all-encompassing energy that holds it all together. We could say uh, that the zero represents the energetic field of all-encompassing love for order and harmony and evolution. And there's a link in the description um, of this video so that you can watch level zero, the zero point, if you so choose. Level three. When we get to level three, it opens up an entirely different way of being in the world. I'm dividing it up into two parts. I didn't know that until just a moment ago, but this is going to be part one because there's so much power in the third level of the creative energies that it is really useful to have a little bit of a grounding into this level because as you might recall, and you'll see again when I go to the demo mode in a few minutes, that we're working with the the idea of being rooted in our own experience. And we did that in creative energy level one. Then we find where we belong and what we're midwifing into the world, what we're giving birth to through our sexuality, which is also our creative energy zone. So all of our life from the start to the finish, we're compelled to be creative. And when we work with the second level of energy, it gives us an opportunity to focus, which is what each of these levels offers. It gives us focus. So we're not distracted. So we're not all over the map and allowing ourselves to dissipate our energy. We keep it in, um, in the flow of banks, of a river, so to speak, using that as a, as a kind of metaphor. And of course, we hit snags along the way. That's life. But we don't let those snags stop us. So that when we get to level three, we're in a, a most extraordinary energy field. And in order to connect with what this energy feels like and what it offers, we want to think about what many of us have already heard about, as I've said, you know, from the beginning, this isn't my information. This is just years and years of research. Since I was 20 years old, I've been researching what it means to be creative in the world. And now I'm bringing these particular steps in, these zero to nine steps in, so that each of us can sort of harvest the best of what is stimulated through this conversation, and then what you add through your own lived experience and your research. So it's a, a really nice opportunity to recognize that you can take as much time as you choose to, either now or if you want to come back to these videos later. And this is a good time for me to remind us all that as these videos come in, you can certainly create a folder uh, in your on your computer to hold each of the URLs from these videos and revisit them and make a note in your calendar to revisit them. And, you know, when we work in our community, we kind of pinpoint the solstice and the equinox points each year, the four quarters of each year. And you might want to just make a note in your calendar in some fashion, however you keep track of things, to re-listen, to reconnect, because we're never the same twice. We're, you know, we are like the, the water's flowing in the river it's never the same water. It's always new. We're always fresh. We're always now. We're not where we've been and we're not where we're going. We're always right here, right now. So 
I want to open with a little bit of a poetic uh, introduction because that's kind of the pattern that's getting set here. And what I want to share today is something that, again, in our community, we work with pretty much every year. We do a, a free eight-day challenge on the criteria of emotional maturity that is offered to the world through the uh, work of the Menninger Foundation. And you can look up the Menninger Foundation and see if it's something that resonates for you. But the criteria of emotional maturity uh, is a series of seven steps. And here's what they are. I've got them on a little uh, bookmark card here that I've made many years ago. So this is uh, the criteria of emotional maturity. And this really does give us a foundation for the third level of creative energy. The first uh, of the criteria is the ability to deal constructively with reality. The second, the capacity to adapt to change. The third, a relative freedom from symptoms that are produced by tensions and anxieties. The next is the capacity to find more satisfaction in giving than receiving. Then we have the capacity to relate to other people in a consistent manner with mutual satisfaction and helpfulness. I really like that one. And the next is the capacity to sublimate to direct one's instinctive hostile energy into creative and constructive outlets. Now they're really, mm -mm, yeah, yum, yum. And finally, the, the last of the uh, criteria of emotional maturity from the William C. Menninger Foundation is the capacity to love. I can't think of a better way to introduce us to the third level of energy than to recognize it as a space within us. We're working within our stick figure navigational map, and that gives us an opportunity to implant these creative energy fields into our actual body and to visualize, as we mentioned in the introduction or in the in the zero point i'm not sure which that we could visualize from the hindu mythologies we could imagine that there is a cobra a snake coiled at the base of our spine and as we open and climb these creative energy fields also could think of this as an energy ladder as we climb up and up and up and up, eventually the snake gets to the top and opens its hood, it's a cobra, opens its hood and it creates this protection over us. It's um, referred to as the Kundalini rising. It can be very dangerous, which is why I believe that, as I mentioned in the first level uh, video, when I was a uh, young woman and I, was being protected and kept safe by some older individuals in their 30s. Uh, they did not want to share any information with me about the chakras because they said I was not ready. I was too young and I wouldn't really understand what the information, uh, the power of the information and that it would be dangerous. And so now all these many years later, I realized that what they were recognizing was that the idea of doing spiritual bypass and attempting to you know, be something that we're not and to raise ourselves up into the higher levels of the creative energy fields before we've made peace with the lower levels or know how to balance ourselves between the the positive and the negative poles of each of these battery packs. We could even call each of these levels a battery pack. They literally keep us engaged in life as they uh, release their, their um, vibration through our body. I'm going to show you some work probably when we get to the fourth or the fifth levels of energy uh, from the artist Alex Gray. You might be familiar with his work, but I'll be showing you some of the ways that he has 
mapped out. We're just doing a simple stick figure. I mean, it doesn't have any talent connected to it, which makes it easy for all of us. And nobody has to have any special skills to engage in what we're doing here. But then we see these, the mastery of someone like Alex Gray and how he has mapped out all these meridians and these vibrational fields through the body and made them so beautiful to see, to look at, and to connect with. But if we're looking at this third level of energy as a place where we begin to esteem ourselves, not let the ego run us all over the place and make us think that we're so great, but just have sort of a humble confidence comes in at the third level and a sense of, you know, just really loving the self because we're here, because we were born, because we deserve to be here, because each and every one of us has our gifts and our talents. And as we develop them and they become skills, and as we climb the ladder of the creative energy fields and know what each and everyone offers, then we become masterful in being who we are. And nobody can be who we are and we can't be who anybody else is. It's almost, you know, a cliche. I mean, everybody's themselves. And so, but we don't get educated to be ourselves. So when we come into this kind of um, focus, as we're doing in this series, it isn't like this is rocket science. This is simply bringing ourselves back home again. We're coming back home so that we can be who we came here to be. And that's not an easy um, journey, but it's so worthwhile. <laughs> and it's actually so joyful and beautiful and uplifting and ultimately blissful because we are, get to be the me that has been moving through time and space through the millenniums to get to right here, right now. You, you're here right now. Wow. It's cause for celebration. And I celebrate you. I think it's just the best gift in the world that you've come here at this time. So I want to turn the camera to demo and continue with part one of working with the third level of the creative energies so that we can really do a deep dive into this particular uh, part of our journey. And this is for good reason. This is the culminating point in the first three levels, the first, the second, and the third level of energy are, as we mentioned earlier in our videos, these energies are below the belt, below the waistline. And many of us live our entire life without going any higher up because of what's required in order to rise, in order to raise our vibrational fields. So let's change, I'll turn the camera and we will look at our demo and that will happen like this. Okay, so here we are, and here's our little guy. And as Jacqueline Small in Awakening in Time gives us her description of this energy field, she says that this is the third level. It is the solar plexus. It's a yellow disc. And we want to make this one really a little bit larger than the first and the second. We could actually expand it as much as we want to because it's such an empowering position within us. And because I can't, you won't be able to read the yellow, I will write beside it that this is the pancreas as a gland. The yellow is the color. And this is uh, self-esteem which is the next level up from self-worth. We can be very um, narcissistic about our self-worth, but when it gets elevated to self-esteem, we become much more aware of, again, how unique and individualized each of us are 
and we but yet we can't become ourselves by ourselves so we do need each other but we have to have a self first and so that's what we're, we're really working with during our journey here we, we get to be rooted grounded stabilized our tripod down here at root at level one we uh, get to explore our worth our value by recognizing that our sexual urges are our it's our urge to create to be part and parcel of the world and of course it can be the urge to create a new life it can also be the urge to create a beautiful meal a representation of a skill uh, a wonderful painting writing whatever it might be uh, it comes out of this combined configuration of the first, the second, and the third. We can't have one without the other. And uh, Jacqueline Small describes this zone, the solar plexus, the third chakra, third creative energy level, as issues concerning self-esteem or self-identity. So this is really a lovely lovely place to hang out for a little while and that's why we're going to do a two parts for this particular level of energy when we come over and look at the key words for this part we're looking at um, again every level of energy is like a battery and it's a battery that's impregnated into our vibrational field runs up and down through the body and in this third level battery of the creative energy fields uh, we feel at home in the world and we recognize that we're a child of the earth this is the area that sits right behind our belly button and or it's often referred to as the body's brain i'll be telling some stories in part two about how this level of energy uh, can function to its greatest benefit. And when it's out of alignment, it can create tremendous uh, chaos in our lives. The positive energy descriptive words for this third level is, uh, is our um, artistic humorous, abundant, optimistic, attractive, as in magnetically attractive. We would like our dreams and our visions and our goals and our desires to manifest, but they can't manifest if we don't attract them in. You know, the law of attraction is a, is a real thing on, in the third dimensional plane. We have to have a vision. We have to have a goal. We have to have a reason for waking up in the morning. We cannot be drifting and just imagining that just because we want it, it's going to happen. There has to be structure. Again, banks on our rivers. We have to feel that the energy can flow through us, flow and go up this channel that we're working with right here and now. So self-expressive, attractive, optimistic, artistic, humorous, abundant. These are all aspects of the positive light-filled dimension of this third level of energy. When we're on the negative pole, reminding ourselves that positive is not is not good and negative is not bad when we're looking at a battery we're just simply looking at two ends uh two opposite ends and they work together they actually make energy by working together so what we want to do is kind of the middle way we want to find a way to stand in the middle and here's our middle way and we want to be able to look out at the negative and look out at the positive and see what is most functional for us at any given time and often with the negative pole of any one of these energy levels 
the negative pole is simply a, an opportunity to become more aware. So we don't waste our energy, dissipate our energy, and not get anywhere, kind of just you know stay in one place like a hamster on a wheel. So the, the uh, negative pole of the third level, the self-esteem energy field, the negative keywords that I have in this uh, first chart that I made so long ago, uh, scattered, whining, hurtful words, exaggeration, self-centered, jealous, I like very much to remind us that we don't have to be scattered ourselves, though we can be on any given day. We don't have to be whining in our own life about what's going on. We might not be speaking the hurtful words or making the exaggerations. We might have grown up enough not to fall into self-centeredness for any length of time. We might catch ourselves and move forward. And jealousy, uh, that green monster, that might not be something that we are uh, ourselves engaged in. We certainly all have felt all of these energies, but they might, they might not be part of our experience at this moment in time. However, we live in such an extraordinary time on the planet right now where we can certainly see what it looks like for there to be scattered energies whining going on, um, a proliferation of hurtful words ex and exaggeration. Would, do we even know what the truth is in any given situation anymore without being the existential detective? So it's a really, really rich energy field, which is why we want to spend as much time here as we possibly can before we go over the belt and go up into the higher levels. We really want to know what's going on down here. And, you know, take a minute and think about your own body. Think about how you experience your experiences at any given time and how often you might feel your adrenals trigger into fight or flight, just fear, any kind of fear or disorientation. Um, we can get distracted and not remember why we're engaged in the direction that we're choosing. So there's a lot of ways in which these exaggerated energies and the negative uh, third level can show us, they show themselves to us through the news, through conversations that we might overhear or that might get projected onto us. Somebody might be feeling very out of alignment with their own creative energy on any given day, and they might project that onto you or onto me or onto others in a very self-centered and exaggerated way with hurtful words, being you know just mean for the sake of being mean because they don't know how to align with their own uh, center and bring themselves back home because who's teaching them to do that so there's a lot of opportunity again in part two we'll go deeper but there's a lot of opportunity in the third level of energy to recognize that if we can access the power of this level we're connecting with our own sense of self-esteem we're honoring our own self and we're connecting with the wonder that comes from being in the world. It's, a, it's an extraordinary world. It's a wonderful world. It's a world filled with wonder. And this level of energy reminds us of that. In the archetypes, it's the energy of the empress. And again, if we go to Carol Bridges and we use her as our touchstone for the archetypes, the archetypes being energies and qualities of the collective consciousness, meaning everybody in the on the globe, every human being carries the resonance of this level of energy within their their body. But again, who's teaching us this? And if we're not educated, we're ignorant. 
And it's our experience that really gets us in touch with each and every one of these levels. We could say that the adrenal seed energy of the red helps us learn about what scares us uh, through our insecurity and the ways that we feel unsafe. We could say that our self-worth is often damaged by our experiences early in life. The first 15 to 25 years of our life can often cripple us in terms of our capacity to feel that we deserve to be here or that we have um, any real gift to share. So there's just uh, endless ways in which we can get stopped below the belt. Keep the belt in mind. Remember the belt. And remember how now we've got these three positions beneath the belt. And that everything that you are, everything that I am from a creative energy standpoint, from our vitality and our life force and our ability to express, it's all wrapped up in here. And so, so many of us are walking wounded and kind of stuck below the belt. There is a tremendous amount of beauty connected with this level of energy. And when we can, when we learn to um, relate to it and know that it's there, you know, just kind of pat your belly button and say, you know, this is the body's brain. And that's a, that's a great note to take and to add to your map. This is the body's brain. And this is where our feeling nature emanates from. It climbs from the red to the orange to the yellow, it all relate, all of three areas really co-create our sense of self-esteem and our sense of worth and our ability to think for ourselves because this is our feeling body. It's our deep feeling body and it's primarily centered right here in this yellow disc right below the belt. So there's a connection to wonder here and curiosity. And if our curiosity is open and we're uh, just sort of wide-eyed, and if we think about the third level as correlating, just, just for example's sake and just for the fun of it, just for the playfulness of it, think of it being like a, a healthy three-year-old. And just watch a healthy three-year-old if you have the opportunity to do that. And if a healthy, healthy three-year-old means healthy, there, there's a sense of well-being, then there's an openness and a curiosity and a lot of questions and a lot of how does this work and why is this happening and where are we going and are we there yet? And so much openness. So this is where we want to involve ourselves in a new way. We want to be self-expressive. This is our self-expression comes out of this space. And it's a great energy field to work with through the idea of being alive to the beauty. How often our limbic brain, which is way up here in the back of the brain, our reptilian brain is through the millenniums, it's just calibrated to spark off of the fight or flight of the adrenals. And we just drop right down into this scared zone. And we forget that it's where we can plant a vision seed or be connected to something deeper than ourselves. We forget that. But we've evolved and evolved and evolved. And we're now in the 21st century. So it's a really exciting time to consider that we can feel at home in the world. We can practice that every single day, feeling at home in the world. So Carol Bridges re refers to this energy field as expression and fertility and bounty. Expression, fertility, and bounty. She refers to it as the bountiful earth mother. I love that because as we mentioned the first day when we... Uh, put these roots down. We put these roots down into the earth. We thought of ourselves as perhaps we are like a tree and we, we have our seed vision idea 
we put our roots down and then we begin to grow like a sapling and eventually like a beautiful tree with many, many branches. We could also think of this energy moving through us as like a river flowing. So there's so many different you know, ways that you can work with metaphor and analogies of your own. What Carol Bridges gives us as a power statement for the third level of energy is this. I am a fertile ground of possibility. My talents, abilities, and experiences now combine and compel me toward my highest expression. As I allow myself to be nurtured, I am confident that I will flower. Which, of course, if you're in the community, you know that one of my favorite, favorite ways of sharing energy and information regarding our ability to live in the now and in the flow is to make uh, just a, a little circle and then make a lemniscant that goes up, a lemniscant that goes out. And this is the vertical orientation above and below. Again, our stick figure could pop right in there. We're just thinking about up and we're thinking about down. Again, the poles of a, of a battery. And then this is the horizontal bar, which represents the past and the present in the way that I'm oriented on my paper. I hope it comes through. I'll write it down. The past over here, the present, the future over here. The now is right here in the middle. And we can, you know, we can swing out to the past and see our experiences. We can swing forward into the future and imagine what might be coming to meet us. We can have a sense of being grounded and balanced in connection to the deep within and a faith that carries us up and out toward a sky father, masculine energy, earth mother, feminine energy. These are just compasses, an orientation, a way of gaining focus, 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 focus. <laughs> I drink a tea, uh, a green tea, a matcha green tea that is uh, on, a, on the label. It says a moment of focus. And on every tea box, I cut out a moment of focus and I place them in my studio at different points around my studio because there's so much to distract us. So this power here is that we just have a way of looking at eight different points When we go deeper into the creative energy work, we find there's these eight different, we could call them petals on a flower, and we become blowers. So like a river, like a flower, we're here to express and to be who we came here to be. Not to confuse you, but you know, there's just endless ways to connect with this particular point of self self-esteem and self-expression and as many ways as there are to express from here are ways to get blocked when we get to here and so in part two we're going to look at what creates momentum for going higher so i'm going to turn our camera and do our close And here we are. I'm so grateful that you're here. Thanks for uh, staying with me. I hope that you will comment. How does this experience land for you? Self-esteem, self-expression, uh, the idea of it being blocked because one, um, the first, the second, or the third level has been in some way compromised or traumatized. And so that there's just this awareness that, oh yeah, I've been living scared or I'm constantly distracted or I don't really know how 
or what I'm here to express, second level. I de definitely don't understand my own sense of self-worth, self-esteem, my value, third level. You know, just begin to get real with yourself through your journaling process. And if you've had the experience of learning, you know, share that with us in the comments and let us know what has helped you to find uh, a sense of peace and connection and compassion for the first level, the second level, and the third level as we've uh, skimmed the surface of these energies at this point in time. When we uh, do part two, I'll go deeper into this level so that we can each mine the gold that lives here and particularly uh, recognize how important it is to have structure so that we don't get buried in an avalanche or swept away in a tsunami or, or go into amnesia just when it's time to um, break through that belt that we've got on our stick figure. As we go into the fourth level of energy, which will be in the next the video after the next one since there's going to be two parts to level three uh, when we get to the fourth level we actually cannot get there without doing the part two of level three so i'm really really glad that you're here this is iona this is ren house studio and i am so grateful that you are here as we are exploring the creative energy fields and these are uh, an exemplification, a relating with the uh, vibrational fields that move through us as human beings and how empowering it is and how wonderful it is to begin to walk through the world with the awareness that, you know, we could think again of the caduceus in the medical uh, field with the two snakes wrapped around the staff and the staff we could look at today in level three as our spine as our backbone and how powerful it is that we have a backbone that we're upright that we walk through the world facing outward and knowing hopefully that we have a reason for being here it's just the most magnificent gift that we can give to ourselves is to value ourselves, to esteem the fact that we are here and that we are whole. When we get to the higher levels and wrap the energies around us, we really get the visual image through the growing stick figure map. We get the, the visual image of being a portable unit in the world and really being of a piece, like a healthy cell in the body of the universe. And then we're ready to connect with our community because we're of a piece. We're not walking wounded and we're not pulling on others to try and get our insecurities and our, and our uh, feeling of not being safe in the world we're not looking outside to get somebody to rescue us. Like my teachers remind us all the time, nobody's coming. <laughs> nobody's coming to rescue you. This is, you know, a do-it-yourself kind of journey. And the reason why these videos are being made is to remind me and you and anyone who picks these up that, um, yeah, this is a fabulous, fabulous journey. Joseph Campbell referred to it as the hero's journey, the hero or the heroine. We are here to mine the gold of our own experience and um, share it, share it with others. So here we are, and I'll see you for part two, and we will continue our exploration. So glad you're here. Thanks for leaving comments. Thanks for the thumbs up. Really, really appreciate it because this is a very intimate little community and uh, we grow together. See you soon.